Thanks for your company. See you next time on The Chase Australia. Tonight, the Dean Laidley photo scandal. One officer suspended, up to six more facing investigation. Mother's Day given the green light as the state keeps its COVID record clean. The legal battle forcing airlines to pay refunds on cancelled flights. Discriminated for wearing a face mask. Complaints on the rise, a warning to anyone who dares. The horrifying moment a monkey dragged a little girl along a side alley. And Power and Crow stars take their rivalry to the racetrack. Live from Adelaide, 7 News with Jane Doyle. Good evening. A police officer who distributed photographs of arrested AFL figure Dean Laidley, dressed in drag, now himself faces jail. The former port assistant remains behind bars charged with stalking. It's the arrest that's exploded into a scandal. Hours after Dean Laidley was charged with stalking, photos of him in custody shared on social media, showing him wearing a dress and a blonde wig. Now it's the police investigating their own. This is one of the most appalling breaches um, and I cannot recall a breach of someone's privacy like this. A senior constable who was not involved in the arrest is accused of taking the photo during the 53-year-old's police interview. His mugshot also photographed. It was an idiotic thing to do, it's an unacceptable thing to do and I can't understand how people can't believe that's not going to get distributed to anyone. It's claimed the officer shared the pictures with six other people. He's been suspended on full pay, possibly facing criminal charges, including unauthorised disclosure of information. The penalty, up to two years jail. Lawyers believe Dean Laidley could sue for damages. Look, I think it's serious because there are elements of transphobia involved in the salacious release of these photographs. In a podcast points. just last week, the North Melbourne Premiership hero and Dean former Laidley. coach Dean admitted Laidley to struggling out. with COVID-19 restrictions. Then you're stuck at home because nothing's open um, and then you don't have footy. So I'm actually breaking my neck for it to, uh, to start. The father of three remains in custody, facing stalking charges and committing an offence while on bail. Cameron Bow, 7 News. There's some good news for South Australians tonight after weeks of tough coronavirus restrictions. We've now recorded 12 days with no new cases and authorities are looking to loosen the rules. Elspeth Hussey joins us live and El Mother's Day gatherings have been given the green light. They have, Jane. This is welcome news to families right across the state, especially after that pretty isolated Easter we have. Uh, there's been a lot of us keeping our distance from our loved ones since this health crisis began, and a lot of older citizens in particular have been uh, staying indoors and away from their grandkids. Uh, and at the advice of health authorities, that is, today, though, the chief medical officer gave her blessing for families to gather on Sunday for Mother's Day. But there is a but. Social distance distancing principles must be observed. So that means groups of no more than 10 and making sure there's enough space for people to separate. South Australians have had so much common sense in this space. Um, they've followed the recommendations uh, and, and I don't think people are going to have any problems this weekend working out what is going to be best for them and best for their loved ones. Uh, this is general advice though, so those with relatives who are at particular risk should think twice. But with playgrounds now reopening, parks are sure to be a hit on the weekend and families can start planning without hesitation and buying a bunch of flowers from here might be a good place to start, Jane. Indeed, they look beautiful. Thanks, Elle. And local footy might be about to get a free kick. The Premier's eager to get Sandful back playing, perhaps before the AFL, thanks to our impressive COVID record and border restrictions. Much love, but struggling grassroots footy is looking good for an early return. If our current health trend continues, it could be within weeks. I think the SANFL is in a really good position because they don't require their players to travel interstate. I've been working over the weekend uh, with people locally but also with um, AHPPC nationally and that plan is going to National Cabinet tomorrow morning. Players are bursting out of their skins. New Central skipper Luke Harbel's keen to resume full training and hopefully games as soon as possible. 
it will finish up and that we will get back to playing has been a motivating factor. If local encouraging signs get the sandfall back, die-hard footy fans will also be the winners. It could be a, a positive thing for community clubs and the AFL to see how it could work if there needs to be um, certain restrictions. Games may be scheduled back to back at the one venue. Fans may be excluded and players may have to forfeit their payments, but a survival instinct is growing by the day. I've been really buoyed by what's been said and by the reaction of the players so that they want to go out and play footy. I think it would be a wonderful reward for South Australians to be able to get back out and see some sandful footy. Of course, much depends on no further cases locally this week and the long-awaited relaxations from National Cabinet on Friday. Mike Smithson, 7 News. 400 Aussies cooped up in hotel quarantine in the city are finally free to go home. Their marathon rescue mission came to an end with all given a clean bill of health. They say there's no place like home and these smiles said it all. We are so happy the way they treated us and uh, we're so happy to go back. After months stranded overseas, a marathon flight from India, then two weeks in hotel quarantine, 376 Aussies are finally homeward bound. Very happy that we are safe and our community is safe. We are driving back to Melbourne now, unfortunately, seven hours. We've done everything we can to make it as comfortable as possible for them. And that's an understatement. The Pullman Hotel organised a show-stopping farewell led by Adelaide's German wonder boy, Hans. The show's theme was all about hygiene and our Premier got the message loud and clear. Glenn 20, Glenn 20. I mean, this is a guy who started in the sleazy back bars of Berlin. You were there, you remember, <laughs> darling. Many of you don't come from South Australia, but we do hope that you remember this hospitality and we hope to have you back here another time in our fabulous city. Thank you all. You uh, Keep safe. Keep washing your hands, keep away from each other. The Playford Hotel will treat their 300 or so quarantining guests to a DJ party tonight ahead of their departure tomorrow, but it'll be hard to top this. Elspeth Hussey, 7 News. Police believe a good Samaritan unknowingly helped free a bogged car with a body in the boot. Detectives investigating the suspected murder of drug dealer Michael Purse early last year believe his killers were planning to dump the 32-year-old's body in the Adelaide Plains region when their green Daewoo Lanos became stuck. It's understood an oblivious member of the public came to the rescue. It's critical to our investigation for us to identify the person who helped these people get out of the bog and would encourage that person to ring Crime Stoppers tonight. Detectives believe Mr Purse was murdered in this Kilburn unit and that at least five people know what happened. A busker who was bashed with his own ukulele during the Fringe Festival says he lives in fear of another attack. The culprit was today set free from jail after a court heard he was getting treatment for mental health issues. It's this moment that landed 29-year-old Barry Seeker behind bars for two and a half months. Brandishing the busker's own ukulele, Seeker bashed performer Matt Eberhardt, leaving the musician with gashes on his forehead. Now when I'm playing and someone comes, I never know if they're going to attack me or they're going to give me a buck. But today a magistrate decided Seeker could now walk free after being sentenced to time already served. Is he sorry for what's occurred? Yes, he is. I just hope he doesn't do it again. That's it. You know, if he doesn't, if he doesn't hurt anyone again, then, you know, that's fair. The court heard Seeker had previously been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and at the time of the attack was not taking his medication. The magistrate noted Seeker's behaviour has improved while medicated in custody. The outburst will also cost Seeker financially. He'll have to fork out more than $600 for his victim's medical bills and $300 for a new ukulele. Mr Eberhardt says the whole experience hasn't deterred him from busking for a few bucks. I'm banana man. I'm now a banana man. I play in Glenelg when the weather's good, so come out. Elise Baker, 7 News. 
Innocent drivers are among those injured in a dramatic end to a failed northern suburbs getaway. A man fleeing police crashed into three cars on Main North Road, then took off on foot before he was hit by a vehicle coming in the other direction. The aftermath of a failed getaway. That's something you see in movies. I've never, ever, ever seen this in my life. I don't have words to describe it. Oh, my God. Witnesses say it's just sheer luck no one was killed when the driver of this silver Kia slammed into three cars on Main North Road and knocked over a light post. He'd been spotted moments earlier driving with the vehicle's lights off, but when officers tried to pull him over, it's alleged he took off at speed. He needs to actually slow down, think about his actions and stop being a bloody idiot. If you can't drive properly, don't get a licence. The 23-year-old man from Smithfield Plains tried to flee the crash on foot, but he didn't get far. Before he'd even crossed the road, he was struck by a car coming in the other direction. I am honestly shocked after what I've seen, how anyone would have survived that. I'm really shocked. Two of the innocent motorists caught up in the chaos were taken to hospital with minor injuries. Paramedics worked on the driver who was in a critical state for more than an hour. It always ends up with someone innocent getting hurt. That's awful because basically you're out innocently driving and you could be cleaned up so yeah not good. The driver remains in the Royal Adelaide Hospital in a serious condition. He'll be questioned in coming days and likely charged with a range of offences. I'd rather him get hit than get away honestly. He got what he deserved. Rosie Barnett 7 News. The heartbroken friends of two brothers killed in a head-on crash on Victor Harbour Road have paid tribute to the pair. They say the men were caring and hard-working and their deaths have shocked their family and the community. Overcome with grief. Yeah, I'm lost words. Sorry, guys. Friends struggle to comprehend the sudden loss of two brothers. It's difficult. You know, you never know when you last goodbye is. Mujtaba and Javad Mohammadi were driving from Adelaide to Victor Harbour to purchase a roller door when tragedy struck. Their van collided head on with a Ford Ranger ute. Both vehicles were torn apart. The brothers didn't stand a chance. They were popular members of the Afghani community. Their deaths have left friends and family reeling. Shocking that these things happen to these young boys. 28-year-old Javad is being remembered as a loving son who'd also do anything for his mates. His 31-year-old brother leaves behind a wife and a young son. Two young men, protective, lovable, charming, and we've just lost them in a, an instant. Relatives have told Seven News when the pair's mother was told of their deaths, she was so traumatised she was admitted to hospital. She'd single-handedly raised the brothers and their siblings after the passing of their father cannot imagine how she will cope with this. The investigation into exactly how this tragedy unfolded is continuing. Major crash police are waiting on drug and alcohol testing results from the driver of the ute. The 49-year-old mother from Hallett Cove maintains she has no idea what caused the tragic accident. So far, no charges have been laid. Tim Yateman, 7 News. Victoria has recorded 22 new COVID-19 cases in the past 24 hours, 19 of those linked to a meatworks plant. The Cedar Woods Abattoir is now at the centre of one of the state's biggest outbreaks, with 34 known cases. The Victorian government still hasn't officially named the facility, which five years ago made a donation to the Labor Party. An elderly man has become the 15th resident to die from coronavirus at Sydney's infected nursing home, Newmarch House. New South Wales has recorded just one new case of COVID-19. A seven-year-old boy tested positive with his school now closed for extensive cleaning. Police on the Gold Coast are out in force after hundreds of locals packed a popular park yesterday. Queenslanders took advantage of relaxed restrictions just north of the border but didn't stick to social distancing measures. The state's police commissioner accused them of threatening the state's COVID-19 recovery. New Zealand's Prime Minister will join Australia's National Cabinet meeting tomorrow to discuss the possible resumption of travel between the two countries. Scott Morrison will also map out a path to relaxing restrictions, with retail stores likely to be the first to reopen. Once busy shopping centres now virtually deserted. Just very miserable. Just Most closed, those who remained open doing it tough. We just can't wait to, like, to be back the old days, you know what I mean? The wait mightn't be too long. We'd like to think within the next um, 
week or so that we would start to see retailers opening. National Cabinet will discuss that tomorrow as it prepares to announce the first major easing of restrictions on Friday. Of course we want uh, shops to open, we want people to go back into the, the shopping centres. Any reopening will be gradual, extending it to restaurants and bars a 50-50 chance. And it's very important that we all take baby steps. One of those steps, encouraging people back into offices for one or two days a week, a gradual wind back of working from home as work on a vaccine continues. Well, it's entirely possible that by the end of this year or early next year, we will have a vaccine for COVID-19. New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern will join tomorrow's National Cabinet video conference to discuss a possible easing of border restrictions between the two countries to create a trans-Tasman bubble. Allowing travel between the two countries but not for some weeks yet. It's fair to say there are significant advantages for New Zealand in terms of a trans-Tasman bubble. Mr Morrison also speaking with British Prime Minister Boris Johnson last night canvassing Britain's support for an independent investigation into the pandemic despite China's angry resistance. Mark Riley, Seven News. Westpac has joined the queue of banks delivering bleak economic news with its profits plunging 70% in just six months. It's been whacked by last year's money laundering scandal, interest rate cuts and now uncertainty due to coronavirus. Experts say it's a challenging time for customers for too. It's going to be tougher to get money from the banks. The Reserve Bank meets tomorrow to decide whether to cut interest rates even further than their current record lows. And Network Finance Editor Gemma Acton joins me. And Gemma, could rates go to 0%? Well, Jane, never say never, but the central bank has made it really clear that it doesn't want to drop interest rates below their current level of 0.25%. Most economists actually think the next move will be up, but not for at least two years or quite possibly longer, given that we're headed into a recession. Jane. Thanks, Gemma. Despite America recording its deadliest day yet, Dozens of states are preparing to wind back coronavirus restrictions from tomorrow. And while the crisis deepens, the White House is ramping up its accusations against China. Staging an American comeback under the gaze of an American hero. We are joined now by President Donald Trump. A televised town hall inside the hallowed Lincoln Memorial with an opening salvo for China. I think they made a horrible mistake and they didn't want to admit it. We wanted to go in, they didn't want us there. You could fly out of Wuhan and you could go to different parts of the world, but you couldn't go to Beijing and you couldn't go to any place in China. So what's that all about? A leaked Homeland Security report revealing US officials believe China intentionally concealed the severity of the pandemic in January to hoard medical supplies. The White House stepping up pressure over the source of the outbreak. I can tell you that there is a significant amount of evidence that this came from that laboratory in Wuhan. President Trump revising up the estimates of how many American lives will be lost to COVID-19. I used to say 65,000 and now I'm saying 80 or 90. Announced an ambitious goal saying he thinks a vaccine could be ready by the end of this year. If it's another country, I'll take my hat off to them. We're working with other countries. We're working with Australia. Until then, 32 governors are giving businesses the green light to trade. Paul Kadak, 7 News. Interesting decisions. Now let's check in with Soda on what's coming up in sport. Well, Jane, the Crows putting a bit of pressure on the AFL to ensure the Victorian clubs don't get an advantage as they start to ease back into all their training protocols now. Uh, also, the Crows draw first blood for 2020 with their skipper too slick for a power giant. And teenage dream, the 16-year-old who overcame a hiccup on debut a couple of weeks ago to ride to his maiden win. We're going to find out all about him and plenty more coming up shortly. Good on him. Thanks, Soda. Holidaymakers left shortchanged by the COVID pandemic are being urged to take part in a class action. That story coming up later this hour. But next, confronting footage of a man viciously assaulted in Hindley Street, two men are standing trial. The road rager with a smile and stick, what set him off? And we hear from our nurses on the front line, plus how you can thank them. Seven News, brought to you by Industry Superfunds. I suddenly realised we're all in this together. That feels especially true, given what's going on. 
It is good to know that our super will help us and our economy bounce back. And if you're with one of these, your super is invested in things that create jobs and keep Aussie businesses strong, delivering good long-term returns that benefit all of us. After all, we're all in this together. This is what the world has been waiting for. Brilliant. Incredible. They just got bigger and crazier. That is a wow moment. We're celebrating the extraordinary. Oh my God. This really is world class. Brand new. Britain's Got Talent. Wednesday, 7.30 on 7. If you're in business in Australia, right now you're facing one of your toughest challenges. Business Australia can help you manage your responsibilities to your employees and assist with strategies to maintain and sustain your business. For free advice and support, visit businessaustralia.com. I want you on my side. And I want you to help me take him down once and for all. Would I do absolutely anything to survive? Yes. Be greedy. Be hungry. He's not capable of alliance, only destruction. I am a monster. All systems have to die eventually. The brand new season of Billions, now streaming only on Stan. For making sense of a changing world. For understanding what's next. For the edge you need. The Australian. For the informed Australian. When help is far from reach. When hope is lost in an instant. A familiar face finds you. Experience reassures you, and innovation carries you. They're yours. They're Australia's Royal Flying Doctor Service. And I get five years cap price servicing with my new Corolla. Well, they're impressed. We're here to keep you moving forward. That's why our Toyota dealerships and service centres are still open. Older feeling. Toyota. Tasty, affordable and delicious. What's for dinner in the next break with Coles? Police are still searching for a driver and passenger who led them on a dramatic chase overnight, hurling rubbish and a glove box cover at them from their car window. The female driver of the VW Golf refused to pull over at Paralawi and eventually dumped the car at Largs North, avoiding road spikes along the way. A third occupant was found at the scene, but he's been released without charge. There was an explosive scare at Devon Park last night with the bomb squad called in to render a homemade device safe. A jerry can and fireworks were found inside an SUV which had caught fire. Officers have spoken with the car's owners and the vehicle will be forensically examined. A driver has smashed a car's side mirror in a road rage attack on a Sydney street. The man can be seen laughing while wielding his weapon. The passenger who filmed the attack said the angry driver was set off by a minor traffic incident. Confronting footage of the moment a man was viciously assaulted and allegedly left for dead has been played in court. But the accused's attackers say they were acting in self-defence. Jonathan Ridge lies critically ill in hospital after a Saturday night out in Hanley Street turned violent. A court's heard he got into a fight with strangers 22-year-old Christian Hill and 24-year-old Jordan Grantham in September 2018. They're standing trial in the district court after pleading not guilty to aggravated recklessly causing harm. Footage played in court shows the trio jostling back and forth, landing punches before Hill and Grantham kick Mr Ridge in the head. He then 
then falls back, his head slamming into the pavement. The fight ended with critical blows simultaneously inflicted by both of them. The prosecutor told the court the pair then jumped into a taxi and went home, leaving Mr Ridge lying bleeding on the road. He was rushed to the Royal Adelaide Hospital where he underwent emergency brain surgery. Part of his skull was removed and he has permanent hearing loss in one ear. He'd taken MDMA on the night and has no memory of the attack. Lawyers for Hill and Grantham say their clients were acting out of self-defence, that Mr Ridge was drunk and on drugs that night and was spoiling for a fight. None of the men painted themselves in glory. All three men had engaged in combat. The trial will run for five days. Deanna Williams, 7 News. As businesses around the state reopen, many are also receiving a $10,000 cash injection from the state government. Two pairs homewares closed five weeks ago and was struggling to pay suppliers, utility bills and its landlord. But this Lifeline's got them through. A lot of our suppliers are small as well, so you're feeling for them too because you don't want them to close their doors either. So you want to do your part. The downtime's also been used to increase online customers by 70%. Off the back of a 12th day in a row of no new coronavirus cases, our healthcare workers are feeling positive after weeks of uncertainty. And Amelia, you've spoken with some of them. Jane, I have, and it has been a nerve-wracking couple of months for them, and they know the battle's not over yet, but there is now a way that you can thank them for their efforts during these uncertain times. In March, it was announced that the Barossa Valley was a hot spot. Hospitals nearby swung into action. But obviously, when you live in the towns and you work in the biggest hospital closest to the Barossa, um, it definitely has, it definitely brought a lot of anxiety to staff. Now, with the state another step closer to a clean bill of health, it's not lost on our nurses and doctors how quickly things can change. We have two kids at home, I have two girls. Um, and they're only two and four, almost four. Um, so we're worried about them as well. I was a little bit worried at the start to go to work, but after seeing the amazing and thorough preparation all the hospitals have put into place to help minimise the risks, it's made us all feel much more safer. It's a risk that many of us have noticed as well, and ahead of International Nurses' Day next week, we're all encouraged to share your messages of support for our healthcare heroes. It only makes you feel really good for what you do. It makes you feel as though you make a difference. And if you're uploading them on social media, use the hashtag keep them safe so healthcare workers can find them. And if there's something like this that's brightened your day, well, contact us on social media. We'd love to keep sharing these acts of kindness, Jane. Good on you, Amelia. Thanks. Still to come on 7 News. Some people claim they're being discriminated against for wearing a face mask. The Equal Opportunity Commissioner has weighed in. Hear what she has to say next. Total destruction. Family businesses gone in an instant. A taste of freedom across Europe. So why are many reluctant to leave their homes? And the controversial Princess Diana documentary that has William and Harry fuming. One word. Wow. Wow. Sums up this house. I can't think of another word other than... Ugh, like, mm. wow. They transform this tired old monster... It is huge. ...into the ultimate family home. Heaven. Oh. Oh. But one room... My favourite room in the house. ...will divide the competition. If you two were working for me, you'd be out. The owners might have loved the room. Have a wow. look at this. But will you? A reveal like no other. House Rules, tonight, 7.30 on 7. Hello, everyone. Dan and Steph back again with Emmy. And we are so happy to be working with Coles to support the Stephanie Alexander Kitchen Garden Foundation to inspire kids to get grubby in the kitchen and get cooking. And what a great week to get this kick started off in the lead up to Mother's Day. And today, we are going to be cooking eggplant parmesanas. What are we cooking? Eggplant in pyjamas. <laughs> eggplant in pyjamas? <laughs> eggplant in pyjamas. We need to go and pick our ingredients from the garden. I've got one good one here. Oh, I found one in there. Is it big? It's big. So we've got our eggplants and our basil. Let's head back in the kitchen. So we've got our veggies, guys, and we're back in the kitchen. 
We've got a little help of Emmy with us today. To start this recipe, we're actually going to dust these in flour and egg and fry them off. Okay, let's get cracking, Emmy. Beautiful. Here we are, whisking up our eggs. Okay, our next step, guys, we're going to slice up these eggplants. We want them about one centimetre thick. So next step, guys, we're going to dust the eggplants in flour and then we're going to dip them egg and we're going to get them in the fryer. So pretty easy, we're just going to get all this eggplant mm -hmm. in here. I'll cut some little sections just for gap fillers. All right, nearly finished flouring. We're going to head over the stove and we're going to fry up our eggplant. All right, let's go. Can I put one Doesn't take long, guys. We just want to brown that egg mix up. We're cruising along nicely. Thank you, Amy. Okay, so our eggplant's been fried off. Now we're going to sprinkle the salt and we're going to layer this all up nice and neatly. So we've got some tomato sauce down. You want to put the tomato sauce in? Good job. Good job. Put in all the gaps. So now we'll put the eggplants in. Next step, guys, we're going to get some cheese and some basil in there. Mm. Then we're going to get the eggplant back on. Then we can get sauce on top of that. We're nearly at the end. We're nearly about to put this in the oven. So we're just going to top it off with some more sauce and a good grating of parmesan cheese. You're going to have nice, salty richness on top. Now it goes in the oven for about 20 to 30 minutes to golden up on top. And there you have it, guys. So simple and easy to make and so delicious. We really loved cooking in the kitchen with Emmy tonight and we hope this inspires you to get into the kitchen with your kids. For the recipe, head to coles.com.au or the Kitchen Garden website. Enjoy our eggplanting pajamas. Enjoy eggplant pajamas. Let's go. Enjoy our eggplant pajamas. Woo! A fourth police officer has been honoured in the final funeral service following Melbourne's Eastern Freeway tragedy. Constable Josh Prestney was the youngest of the officers killed and was remembered for his devotion to policing, the Collingwood Football Club and heavy metal music. As friends gathered outside, a Foo Fighters anthem blasted over the loudspeakers. Josh is my hero and I love him and this song's for him. Constable Prestney had been with the Highway Patrol only two days, but colleagues say he'd already made a lasting impression. A fierce factory blaze has wiped out several family businesses in Sydney. It ripped through the complex overnight and took firefighters more than three hours to get under control. Just devastated, you know, it's our family business. We've been here over, you know, for a long time, so this is like our house, our home. The building is now too unstable for anyone to enter. Businesses who choose not to serve customers wearing a mask have been warned to think again. SA's Equal Opportunity Commissioner says complaints are on the rise and they can have costly consequences. While corona confusion surrounded the wisdom of wearing a face mask, it's a little more certain you can't refuse service to a customer wearing one. You are allowed as a business owner to take um, precautions to, present, uh, to prevent the spread of disease, but you can't just make that, based on, that, that assumption based on whether someone's wearing a face mask. You can take the recommended social distancing precautions. The Commissioner concedes mask discrimination hasn't yet been proven to be unlawful, but complaints here and interstate are on the rise and it will be tested shortly. She warns it may be unwise to take the risk, particularly given the consequences. It can tie you up for a while, uh, you can, it can become expensive um, and also if it goes to the tribunal it becomes public. Many complaints received have had a racial component. Sometimes they are rude, I think. You get some odd looks every now and again as you're walking around. I think it's a natural little fear component. You know, is he overcautious or is he actually a breeder? If they're not covering themselves while they're coughing or just hearing someone cough at a distance, that worries me probably more. It's very important that people take precautions to prevent the spread of the disease, but it's also really important that we don't discriminate. So we hope that a mask is a barrier to the coronavirus, but it shouldn't be to common courtesy and to service. Tim Noonan, 7 News. The British government is grappling with how to overcome so-called coronaphobia. With nearly 28,500 Britons killed by COVID-19, many are fearing what will happen if their lockdown is lifted as restrictions are eased across Europe. A poll found four out of five people believe British restaurants and pubs should remain closed for now. Princess Diana will be the subject of a controversial new documentary set for release on Netflix. Being Me, Diana, 
We'll delve into explosive claims surrounding her mental health battles, eating disorders and unhappy marriage. The project is reportedly causing turmoil for her sons, William and Harry. It's unclear whether the documentary will affect Prince Harry and Meghan's plans to work with the streaming giant. Next on 7 News, shocking pictures of a child dragged along a side alley by a monkey in Indonesia. Also ahead, mosh pits and music festivals, what the future holds as social distancing becomes the norm. And tempers flare mid-flight, the pilot forced to make an emergency landing. For your official local source of COVID-19 information and the range of support services available, go to sa.gov.au. You slept with my brother. You covered it up for 20 odd years. And my daughter might be his. He'll always be my daughter. No matter what. what if he's not my dad? Home and away, coming up next on 7. This is a message from every quitter. To every smoker. Because I love my family. I love my grandchildren. Because I love you. This is why I want to stop smoking. It's not going to be easy. And look, it's nothing personal. But there's one thing that I've got to ask. Please don't smoke around me while I'm quitting. Because it makes it so much harder. If you can't quit with me. And if you love me too. Don't smoke around me. Please. To help someone you know quit, visit besmokefree.com.au. Hyundai's end of financial year sale is on. Get great value across our eye-catching range. Like the Hyundai i30 hatch with the confidence of a seven-year warranty. And end of financial year bonuses on selected SUVs, including the Hyundai Tucson. And seven-seat petrol V6 Hyundai Santa Fe. Hyundai's end of financial year sale. See it to believe it. With Light and Easy, you can still enjoy a huge variety of delicious, healthy meals in the comfort and safety of your home, thanks to their chefs and dietitians and their contactless delivery service. In fact, Light and Easy has recently been rated Australia's number one healthy meal delivery service, scoring five stars for customer satisfaction, as well as taste, variety and freshness, all things you'll find on their autumn menu. Enjoy delicious, healthy meals with Light and Easy's contactless, award-winning delivery. Order today. He knows he's a fierce hunter, but he doesn't know what cognitive development means. Cats don't always know what's good for them. Lucky you do. Optimum Kitten Formula with DHA. Nothing beats the comfort and even heat of your house pants, except for your central gas heating. While you warm a corner of your couch, let it warm every corner of your home. Love a warm home. Love natural gas. Shop Massive May at Harris Scarf. Take 40 to 60% off all homewares in Manchester, 30 to 50% off all clothing, footwear and underwear, and an incredible 20 to 30% off all electrical. Hurry, don't miss out. See in-store or online for details. Because you can't get to the gym, we'll bring the gym to you. Booper customers get three months access to 28 by Sam Wood on us. Booper. Because life happens. Learn more at booper.com.au. A humanitarian mission in Bolivia has come to a tragic end. Six people were killed when an Air Force plane plummeted into a field in the country's northeast. These aerial pictures show the aftermath of the fiery crash. Early reports indicate the aircraft had an engine failure shortly after takeoff. An ugly brawl has broken out on a flight from LA to Detroit, forcing pilots to make an emergency landing. Video taken on board shows one passenger aggressively punching and swearing at another as witnesses try to break it up. The mid-air chaos was triggered when one traveller became annoyed by others making noise while they were trying to sleep. A brazen monkey has snatched a little girl and dragged her along a brick road in Indonesia. The animal rode up on what appears to be a toy motorbike and grabbed her from her seat, roughly pulling her to the ground. Hey, 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 hey,
Eventually, it let go and she toddled back to her family. As the $750 stimulus handout evaporates and unemployment bites, Australians are tightening their belts. A new survey suggests overall consumer spending is down by 20%, with shoppers reluctant to splurge. At Pets Palace, no wonder they're dancing for joy, family companions enjoying a rise in spending. We are finding a lot of people indulging in their pets. Pet care expenditure up 8%, maybe from more time with them at home and on walks. Some cases we have seen one or two cases where people take their cats out for a walk like a dog with a leash. <laughs> but it's out of step with sliding confidence. A huge fall in spending with spending per person now 20% below normal levels. Latest data shows spending down most for gyms and fitness entertainment, public transport and travel. The biggest improvers, food delivery, up a whopping 156%, followed by furniture and office equipment, online gambling and home improvement. But experts say the effect of the stimulus is fading. Maybe not when it comes to a new toy for the family pet, but tracking of spending shows that Australians are trading down on the hunt for discounts. More than a third of grocery shoppers switching to cheaper outlets and big falls in applications for credit, personal loans and credit cards. I think it's dawning on Australians that the end of the restrictions doesn't mean the end of the crisis. And they're hunkering down with their best friends. Chris Ma, 7 News. There's new hope for would-be holiday makers who've had to cancel their plans due to the virus shutdown. Travellers left short-changed have been told to accept travel vouchers, but there is another alternative. We'll bring you more on that later in the bulletin. We've long been warned that social distancing is here to stay, at least until there's a vaccine. Now, one public health expert says there are some activities that perhaps shouldn't return at all. Social distancing, it's not. What I'm looking for. Probably the, the best, best thing <laughs> ever, so yeah, yeah, I really enjoy it. As we consider life post-COVID, are some activities destined for the scrap heap? Those situations where people are in very large crowds in very close proximity, that's going to be the last thing that we can return to, if at all. Adelaide Muso Corey Davis fears his gigs will never be the same. You've got like moshing and stuff like that as well um, coming into play, so it's, yeah, things like that I guess are just totally a write-off at the moment. Many big name artists have postponed concerts until later this year, but what the venues will look like is still anyone's guess. On things for sure, the show will go on. Venues like the Festival Centre are currently working through options for audiences to return. Other high contact pastimes also face a cloudy future, like Australia's fastest growing martial arts, jiu-jitsu. With the jiu-jitsu we'll probably end up looking at doing uh, some, some body work and some conditioning without having contact. Um, which is not ideal. Experts suggest a fast turnaround COVID-19 testing could hold the key. Does it make sense before those contact sports for us to become used to having that kind of test done frequently to ensure that everybody can participate in a safe way? Casey Trelaw, 7 News. Mm. Time for sport now with Soda and the Crows. Well, the whole interstate rivalry never goes away, does it? They're wanting to make sure that the AFL doesn't give... Victorian yes. clubs and edge training. Well, a bunch of Crows players and Port players are about to return and are returning from interstate. Uh, the Crows don't want those players who are serving that 14-day isolation to miss out on getting training if the Victorian clubs are all back up running together. Just putting a little bit of pressure on. It's not going to really help us, is it, really? <laughs> Let's be honest, it's run from out of Victoria. Coming up, uh, Power and Crows players leave their interstate lockdowns as we're talking about and arrive back in Adelaide. Plus a showdown at the bend as Rory Sloan and Charlie Dixon go for a spin. And 16-year-old schoolboy jockey Jacob Offerman shakes off a dramatic start to his career to nab his first win. Truck. It's not the end of the world. What the truck? It's the brand new season of Outback Truckers. And it's our wildest adventures yet. Tuesday 8.30. New truck heads are going to love it. <laughs> And that's not all. They're bringing along their brand new mates. Meet the Aussie Desert Collectors. You won't believe the treasures that we unearth in the middle of the desert. Magic. It's good, good fun for the whole trucking family. Tuesday from 8.30 on May. Welcome to Bunnings. 
We put measures in place to keep us all safe. You can order online, drive to the store and collect with contact-free pickup. You may have to queue on arrival to limit the amount of customers in store. We're also limiting the number of people per aisle. Protective screens have been installed. And line markings and tables to get 1.5 metres apart. Contactless payment is preferred where possible. We're doing the best we can to get you in and out of Bunnings quickly and safely. Thanks for your patience. Guess who's on the telly? Mummy! Hi, Mummy! My sweetheart! Proudly feeling Australian hockey fans big and small. Sultana Brown. Full on days start with full on fibre. A lot of us are spending more time at home. Ow. Using a lot more electricity and internet. Unfortunately, mm. I select can't help with your naked partner walking past your big presentation. But we could help shrink those household bills. Now's the time to compare, select and save with iSelect on 13 19 20. Wish you had internet that didn't let you down, that doesn't leave you hanging and won't have you missing any of the action? Get Vodafone NBN with 4G backup. Plans start from just $65 a month. And with free express delivery, connect instantly once you receive it. Buy online today at vodafone.com.au. Ready? Uh, Dad, we might need to pick up some more bread. Dad? I'll pick some up. Thanks. Now more than ever, we know what families are going through. So you can pick up Cold Power Advance 1.8 to 2 litre or 1.8 to 2 kilo, now just $8.75. Find them all in our online catalogue. We want you to always get your Woolies worth. That's why I pick Woolies. There's no reason to leave home this winter. Now's the time to make your home comfortable and stay in with the family. Gasworks have everything to make your home comfortable with heating and hot water to suit any home or budget. Gasworks, the home of comfort. Hello again. Well, 7 News understands the Crows have called on the AFL to stop Victorian clubs from training in bigger groups until all 17 of Adelaide's returning players have served their 14-day isolation period. Adelaide is determined to make sure everyone starts their mini pre-season at the same time. Victorian teams are set to get the green light from the state government to hit the track together next Monday. Ben Keyes and Elliot Himmelberg arrived home from Brisbane this afternoon. I still don't know uh, the logistics behind it all, but I think it um, certainly gives me a bit more of a sense that it's, it's getting back sooner. Ben Crocker is the only Crow still interstate. Well, even though there's no football just yet, the Crows have taken early 2020 bragging rights over the power. Stars Rory Sloan and Charlie Dixon hit the track at Tail and Bend, which is considered one of Australia's very best tracks. It's not quite the supercars, but Sloan and Dixon certainly looked the part as they suited up for a showdown of a different kind. Jumping behind the wheel at Tail and Bend, the pair swapped handballs for horsepower. <laughs> bit of filming for SATV and we just wanted to showcase that the bend's still open at the moment. Took us around a bit of an obstacle course out here and um, oh, it was unbelievable fun. That's the really exciting thing to start showing people all around South Australia and where they can actually get out there and, and this is one of those kind of places. And the smaller more nimble Sloan was just too good in the slippery conditions for the power big man. Felt like I was Nicky Louder in his prime. Um, in the wet conditions, you know I love the wet. Yeah, oh well. He got around the first corner a lot better than I did so I think he, that's where he got all his time. Time is what Dixon wants. The 29-year-old is out of contract at the end of the season and with footy on the verge of an official reboot, he can't afford for his career to stall. It's a big year for me and uh, to be able to get back out there and uh, try and um, earn myself a couple more years is, is uh, what, I'm, what I'm trying to do and, and also get out there and uh, see the boys again and, and be able to train with them and turn, um, you know, like try and turn this year around. We want to see footy return, but it's got to be safe as well, I think. So, um, yeah, whatever happens this week, I, I hope it's just the right call for all Australians. Theodoropoulos, 7 News.
Yeah, I think Charlie, get Rory on the motorbike now. The NRL is making big progress towards becoming the first major sport to emerge from the corona crisis. But Roosters coach Trent Robinson is waiting on the result of a test. He didn't join his players at club headquarters for their information session on the strict COVID-19 protocols. The New Zealand Warriors are based in Tamworth and the Melbourne Storm has been granted permission to set up camp in Albury. Teams return to training on Wednesday and the season is still set to restart on May 28. Cricket Australia's cash flow crisis has eased for now with the governing body set to secure a $50 million bank loan. While head office continues to slash costs, players are getting their head around what the rules will look like in a post-coronavirus world. Shining the ball with saliva could well be banned altogether. It will be slightly strange, you know, when you're on the field, it's so natural to get the ball and put a little bit of saliva on your finger and, and try and buff out some of the, the rough areas on the ball. The possibility of shining the ball with an artificial substance is being considered. Could be interesting. Now, the NBL has lost another big name with King Star, Casper Ware, opting out of his contract to explore overseas options. The American import faced having his contract for next season slashed in half. And COVID-19 has put Formula One's history-making return to the Netherlands on hold. Red Bull released a video that was supposed to mark the first Dutch Grand Prix in 35 years this weekend. And professional tennis is back for the first time since the men's and women's tours were suspended in March. An exhibition event is being played in Germany with no spectators, line judges, ball boys or coaches in attendance. And some of the game's greats are doing their bit for charity. Serena Williams and John McEnroe were among those to play in a tournament on the Super Mario Aces video game. I think uh, McEnroe would still probably arc up a little bit now. And 16-year-old jockey Jacob Opperman has shaken off a dramatic start to his career to win his first ever race. The Mount Gambier-based apprentice is clearly one to watch, breaking his duck at only his third meeting. When Jacob Opperman passed the winning post in Bordertown late yesterday, there was no doubt he'd secured his first career win. And young Jacob Opperman, congratulations, young man, his first winner. Yeah, no, it was pretty exciting. Um, I came back into the mountain yard and everyone was saying congratulations and, yeah, it was a big thrill. Oh, I'm very proud, you know, he, he's really stepped up in the last two weeks after what happened. Almost two weeks ago, Opperman thought he'd grabbed a win in his first ever race but didn't realise there was a problem with the barrier gate in Mount Gambier. And here he is charging down to win what he thinks will be his first race but... Unfortunately, we've had a false start. It was just one of those things, but I've moved on from it now. Opperman's ride, Miss Gatsby, ended up being scratched. I'll have a little bit of a giggle at it. One good thing to come out of it was the support of leading Sydney jockey Josh Parr, who he's now in regular contact with. The Year 11 student is also enjoying his newfound status at Grant High School in Mount Gambier. I wasn't too happy about going to school today. Um, Vice principal, he absolutely loves me. He said he, he sees back me every start um, for my race career, except for yesterday when I won. Nikki Barnett, Seven News. <laughs> Are you a bit of trouble today with the vice principal? He didn't back that one. Well, the vice principal made a big mistake. That wasn't the one to miss on. Absolutely. Good he on him, won. though. After a couple of weeks ago, we saw yeah. that. You know, when he got across yeah. the line. So well done to Jake. A big future, hopefully, Fred. Good on him. Thanks, Soda. To Monday Money, and it was a better day for the share market, which recovered some lost ground. Our dollar is buying 64 US cents, 58 euro cents, and a dollar five New Zealand. Stay with us after the break. A special report on your refund rights as lawyers take on the airlines in the fight to get your money back. And we've got a couple of sunny days to enjoy before showers roll in midweek. I'll be back with all the details in the forecast coming up next. 911, what's your emergency? The Adrenaline Charged Show. People can't get out of New 911, tonight on 7. Their doors might be closing, but they're always open on eBay. Stay home, shop online, and help support 40,000 Aussie retailers. Today we'll be offering... They're gone. What do you mean they're gone? The snacks. They're gone. Missing. Well, they have to be here somewhere. They're not here. They can't just get up and walk away. All right. Only 13 more hours to go. New M&M's Mint. In stores now.
The Australian Government is supporting individuals and households during the coronavirus crisis. We've introduced the $550 coronavirus supplement, doubling income support for many. It means those on the job seeker payment could receive up to $1,100 a fortnight. We're also providing two $750 payments to veterans, pensioners and other households receiving income support. These automatic payments will support up to 5 million Australian households. To find out more, visit australia.gov.au. Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. Guess who's on the talent? Mummy! No, Mummy! My sweetheart! Proudly feeling Australian hockey fans big and small. Sultana Burn. Full on days start with full on fibre. It's business as usual at Mannix Air. Right now, buy a Fujitsu inverter ducted system and you can save up to $1,500 in Mannix discounts and Fujitsu free money. Call Mannix for a free quote or go online anytime. Right now, the comfort of our home has never been more important. So it's good to know that at Fantastic Furniture, you can shop our entire range in store or online. Now with contactless delivery and click and collect services. Find your Fantastic today. It's LTV for me. It's LTV for me. More and more people are saying, it's LTV for me. Because the LTV T60 4x4 diesel is from just 27490 drive away. And eligible businesses may be able to claim the government instant asset write-off. Hurry, offer ends May 31. If you're a small business, you've probably got a lot of questions right now, which is why you should speak to a professional accountant who's trained in planning and cash flow management strategies. For further support, contact a professional accountant today. A great pioneer of modern nursing once said, the greatest heroes are those who do their duty in the daily grind of domestic affairs whilst the world whirls. In 2020, the year of the nurse and midwife, 200 years after Florence Nightingale's birth, we say thank you to the nurses, midwives and personal care workers who, in the face of both tragedy and joy, share their care and skills every day of every year. You are our real heroes. So many deliciously easy recipes to try, you'll never get bored when there's pork on your fork. You slept with my brother, you covered it up for 20 odd years, and my daughter might be his. He'll always be my daughter. What if he's not my dad? Home and Away, coming up next on Seven. Breaking news. Breaking now. We begin with breaking news. This is where the news breaks every morning. This is where you're totally informed throughout the day. This is the undisputed news leader at 6 o'clock every night. This is where you're kept up to date with every breaking fact. This is the warning from health officials. On air and online. Sunrise, 7 News at 6, the latest. This is the news you can count on. 7 News. Airlines, travel agents and tour operators are accused of shortchanging tens of thousands of Australians who've had to cancel holidays. A top law firm is now considering a class action and calling for affected customers to come forward. Travel providers put on notice, accused of breaching their legal obligations to customers grounded by COVID-19. We're looking at the options for people to seek to recover their money by way of a class action that we can bring on their behalf. Ashley Schofield was meant to fly to Germany next week, now left with a voucher from travel agent Aunt Betty, worth $1,000 less than what she paid in flights. With the credit voucher that they've given us, we aren't able to use it because it runs out in October this year. Slater in Gordon claims she's not alone, among tens of thousands of Australians convinced to accept vouchers when they were entitled to and would have been better off with a full refund. In other instances, we've seen airlines and travel agencies relying on their no refund clauses, which they've been warned in the past don't apply to all situations. Virgin customers won't be able to join the legal fight. Their case made more complex after the airline went into administration. Qantas and Jetstar are automatically providing vouchers, but say if customers would prefer a full cash refund, we are providing it, adding vouchers can be used until the end of 2021. Often it comes down to the terms and conditions, meaning it always pays to read the fine print. Rosanna Kingsun, 7 News. 
Time for the weather now. And Amelia, we had a grey start to the day, but a bit of sunshine came through this afternoon. Jane, it was a gorgeous afternoon across the city after cloud cleared to our southeast, and we really deserve it after a great few days as well. Now, that sunshine helped us warm to a top of 18 degrees this afternoon, following a cool low of 10, and they are both perfectly average for this time of year. It was a cold morning further north, though, down to zero at Yunter, two degrees at Clare, and cloud cover made it a cold day in our southeast. Narracourt just topped. 13 degrees. Now we're expecting to warm up a fraction over coming days as a high pressure system heads east. It'll reach the Tasman Sea on Wednesday. Now that's around the time though that a cold front will begin to push across from the west, clearing across the south of the state on Thursday. Now that front will need to clear through Perth first. So showers, maybe a storm's forecast there tomorrow. It's looking sunny though in Melbourne, a little bit foggy in the morning. 19's the top there and we've got a shower or two on the way for Sydney. Back home and a fine day's in store statewide. Clear skies could lead to early fog or frost about the northeast pastoral district, the Flinders and mid north, and about areas around the Murray as well. So, possibly a bit of fog around Renmark. 19's the forecast top there, and in Narra Court. Tops of 20 are on the way for Victor Harbour, Kingsco, Nuriotpa, and Kadena. 22's the top for Port Augusta and Whaler, and warm in the west up to 24 degrees in Sedona. In the city, down to 9 degrees overnight. Then, more of that sunshine's on the way. 21's the forecast top. Out on the water, and we've got north to north westerly winds, and they'll be in about 15 knots around midday, easing during the afternoon with seas below a metre. Looking ahead, and we're set to hold on to that sunshine on Wednesday, warming to 22 degrees ahead of that cold front. Now, it's forecast to deliver showers Thursday and it'll be windy. Friday's looking like the wettest day of the week. We could see up to 10 millimetres with showers continuing on and off over the weekend. So be warned about Mother's Day, Jane. Thank you very much. Time to stay inside, I think. That's all the news for now. Thanks for your company. I'll have updates later in the evening. Until then, good night.